Uh, my name is Philip Kinney, and uh, I'm a local filmmaker in Raleigh, North Carolina. Right now I'm working on a sequel to a short film I did a couple of years ago, I think, now at this point. Uh, the reason why I'm doing a sequel to Derivative is because me and two other filmmakers I would uh, go to school with wanted to do an anthology piece. Um, he, uh, my buddy Gary just came up to me one day and started talking to me about it. I was like, all right, I'm in, <laughs> and that's about it. As far as the anthology, I was just, had an idea that of the people around me were all constantly wanting to shoot and shoot stuff. I was just thinking we should just shoot a whole bunch of things and then shoot them with the idea that they're going to be shown next to each other to see the juxtapose of like, what this thing would be. And then Phil stepped it up a notch and was like, well, I'm doing a part two to Derivative, which I thought was funny because I was also thinking of doing a part, or not a part two, but a sequel to um, Flanor. And once that decision was made, it felt pretty real. Then we brought it up to uh, Johnson and then he already had a script ready and he said he was down. Okay, so I actually wrote the script for Squatch Hunt about four or five months ago, maybe six months ago. You know, it was, it was, it was a good time ago. And then um, my friends Gary and Phil Kinney came up to me and said, hey, we're doing this anthology thing. We want to see if you want to be a part of it. You know me, I was like, yeah, definitely. Of course I want to be a part of it. I think the anthology is actually going to be a really neat little thing because we each have our own separate styles of filmmaking, but yet we all have the same basic mindset and same drive that it takes to get what we need to be done. Cause like Gary has the super artistic, like makes you think about life and all this other stuff in his projects. This project makes me feel free to actually just go out in my own life and basically say fuck work, fuck school, fuck society, there's a camera, there's a mic. I've written down these images and these words and these people and this world on a sheet of paper and now I'm taking the actions and the steps forward to bring this from the ether into reality. Everything he does has some type of message behind it. Um, it's never just gonna be, it's not just what you see is what you get. There's gonna be some hidden message in, in, the, in his work that you wanna, that you really gotta look for and try and pay attention for. And I think that's really cool. This film is representing me trying to break away from anything that's full of shit. Like I feel like, I feel like what I've written It's challenging me as a person and as a creative because there's no there's no room for bullshit in it. He's really artistic, man. There's really nothing else to say about it. It's just Gary is a super artistic, creative person, and then Phil gives you the whole little grindhouse, crazy, weird. Um, you never really know what you're gonna see in Phil's work, and I think that's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> I like weird movies and that. Uh... I think it's just more fun to do weird stuff on camera. <laughs> hey, Kina, can you spot me real quick? Dude, it's a, the tree's not very big around, so it's probably a virgin too. And when it comes to low budget filmmaking, like really like minimalistic fucking filmmaking, like you should be just doing something that you either you care about or you just really want to do because it's fun or something like that. Most of the time, I just see the same old shit over and over again. You can tell no one really gave a shit about it, and somehow they're winning awards and all this shit. And uh, 
instead of just kind of having fun and making films that they want to see and something that says something about them. He's not afraid of pushing the limits. He doesn't care who he offends or who, how people really perceive his work because he knows at the base of his work it's good and it's funny and there's somebody if you like it somebody else is gonna like it and that's the way I look at things like make things that you like because you're not alone in the world nobody's as much as we might like to think so that we're the only people that think the way we do and act the way we do we're not there's somebody somewhere else out there that's gonna like the same things you do and do the same things you do it's just it's just how the world works you know? Cause I don't really give that much of a fuck about what it looks like because it's just fun to do and I had the resources to do it and really you don't need that many resources. The first derivative, I had no lights. I was just lighting shit with practical lighting with a shitty camera and fucking... It doesn't look beautiful but it was, you know, people laughed at it. Even if they were laughing at me, I don't care. At least they were laughing at it. We're all in it to have fun but nobody's fucking around. <laughs> We all take what we do serious, we take ourselves serious, but at the same time, we don't take ourselves serious. We have tons of fun when we're on set. We joke around, we have a good time, but we know that we're there to do something, and we're not just gonna, we're not gonna get sidetracked from that. We're gonna do what we need to do, and then have a good time doing it. There's a difference. People think you have to work and then have fun. It's like, dude, you can work and have fun. The first time I legitimately worked with Phil and Johnson was on a, a short called Social Problems, which was honestly the best spring break I've ever had in my entire life to just shoot something an entire week. I was doing behind the scenes photography. Um, I show up at this ridiculously colorful library first person I see actually is Johnson running through with the clapper and Gary was there taking pictures and of course me a super vain person I loved every time the camera Gary was taking my picture so every time I turned around I just see Gary with the camera and I do trying to do something crazy and do something stupid just just to show off and, and then ever since then like, we've been aware of each other's work, of how we move, how we shoot, what our, like, taste in film is, our tones of how we shoot and what we want to shoot. We always had, like, kind of a, a nice little connection. We don't have to really say much. We can kind of work off of, of just looks and hand, hand signals and just pretty much maybe have to say one word and we'll already know. We all kind of look... We're all looking for pretty much the same things. and I love when things come together organically. When you don't even have to try super hard to make things happen. They just are. I think the thing I enjoy most about filmmaking is actually being on set. And uh, I love post-production and pre-production as well, but there's something about being on set that just doesn't compare to anything else. I, I walk onto set and I kind of feel at home. It's like one of the only times where I feel like I'm supposed to be there. Uh, I've done a lot of, I've had a lot of jobs and I've done a lot of stupid jobs and I never felt right doing them. And it doesn't matter what I'm doing on set, I always feel comfortable. Or if it's just being like a PA or it's like go get my coffee. Like, at least I'm there and I know something's being created and I'm contributing to something that's gonna be kind of fun. I love going out shooting things. I love seeing new places. I love just, <laughs> just the aspect of being able to create the things that you think about all day. And it's pretty amazing. And to be able to share it with people is something I really enjoy. Like That's why I like filmmaking, because I never was able to share, really, because I'm not very good at speaking. And I'm not very good at, I'm not going to be a public speaker. And I'm not going to be able to just sit there and read stories to people. I, like, distribution. I, I have to show people. I'm a visual person, so I have to show people. And I've never really been able to show people what's in my head. So once I started doing films and stuff like that, it's like, well, oh, everything I think of, I can actually share with people now. Like I'm not, 
I'm not trapped in here anymore. It was like, now y'all can see what I see. And it, it's, it's kind of cool, because like, I feel like if you enjoy the process, then people will enjoy the product. I just think people should be doing fun shit that they want to do. Whatever the fuck they want to do, they should be doing, because it doesn't cost that much. You don't have to film with Alexis. You don't have to film with Reds, man. You can just go get a fucking shitty camera and make a film. It doesn't matter. And I think that's why um, the first derivative was so lo-fi and just, it was just a cannon on a fucking tripod and with shitty improv dialogue. But it was fun and people thought it was funny because it was, they could tell that we were just bullshitting and having a good time. And it cost me like 20 bucks to make the film, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a 10 minute film that costs like $20. And I think there should be more of that. The thing that excites me about this film is that I feel like I'm alive. It's not just like an assignment that I'm giving and I'm trying to like complete a criteria of things to move on to the next stage. Like I'm actually doing something in my everyday life and I'm creating something that doesn't exist. It's my way of pushing myself creatively and growing creatively. It's my way of expressing myself. Bringing our different styles together and clashing them together because having each separate story, which is like it's complete, each story is completely different from the next. And so I think that's gonna be really cool how we tie them all in together with each other. And After we're all done filming, we're just gonna string them all together and they'll be characters crossing paths and stuff like that. So it'll hopefully come off as a true anthology piece. It feels like it was meant to be. So like, I don't know how much, I don't know how much uh, of this is because of us or because of fate and destiny, if you believe in that type of thing.